commandments for us. And the scripture says this. The scripture says that Moses, even in this, in this, before I can tell you what the scripture says, Moses in this passage is kind of like a mediator between God and man, right? God speaks to him, and he speaks to the people. That's how it's been. He leads them out of Egypt. They're coming. And he's like the mediator. Well, this is what's wonderful. The scripture says in 1 Timothy, this is how you know this whole intimacy, this whole thing, this whole fidelity, this whole communication piece. Is, it mirrors our relationship with God because it says that, uh, and I believe it's in 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy chapter 2, it talks about how there is one God and one mediator between God and man. That's Christ Jesus. That's the man Christ Jesus. So here we are. Jesus is, Moses is a type of Jesus in this thing. He goes away. And while he's away, let me just hurry and paint the picture because the clock, he goes away. And while he's away, because we haven't seen him in a long time, now we have become unfaithful. Now we have decided that we are going to be with other people. We are, we are going to do other things. The, 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 out of sight, out of mind. And it's even worse if our God is invisible. Because you've never seen him. So you feel he doesn't see you. And I was reading this morning. God is so awesome. Reading this morning in the Psalms. He said, he that planted the ear, does he not hear? He that formed the eye, can he not see? And he who made man, does he not know? You don't think he knows what's going on? So while Moses is away, while the mediator is away, he's with God. God says, listen, the people are down there. I'm absolutely sick and tired of them. Let me just wipe them out. I'll start up and raise up a new nation in you, Moses, because this is absolutely ridiculous. I just took them out of Egypt. I just helped them. They just saw these plagues and these miracles. They've seen everything that I'm capable of. They just walked through the ocean with on dry land, and we're not. it's not six weeks that you've been gone. Forty days. It hasn't even been six weeks, and they already forgot about me. That is where we are right now. Jesus is not here. We do not see him. But all of a sudden, we feel like we're big enough and we're grown enough, and we have a natural tendency to worship something. Hey, up make us gods. This is going to be, we need to just go ahead and find something else to connect with. We need to find something else to worship as God or find something else. What are some things people worship other than God? They call Definitely their car. Their jobs. Certainly their jobs. Yep, even their kids. Money. Oh my goodness, people worship their kids. Money. I mean, they got to have it. That's God and mammon. Joshua talks about you can't worship God and mammon. That's infidelity. Mammon is wealth and status and money. You can't do that. That's why Joshua says, listen, I don't know what y'all doing, but ask for me and my house. We're going to be faithful. We're going to worship the Lord. You cannot worship God and mammon. But since we have, we have stopped, since we see, no, don't ask, don't tell, has been lifted and people are getting married, homosexuals getting married in their, in their Marine suits and in their... Not in their, not in their Marine Corps uniform. In their, in their, well, not in their <laughs> but in their <laughs> servicemen <laughs> uniform, in their, in their dress blues. You know what I'm saying? That when, nigga flipped it yesterday? Today. Oh, uh, married <laughs> the things lifted the day that married the day. Oh, putting oh, the rings on the finger oh, in the news today. I need somebody else to worship. I need something else. So I'll I'll do self. And self says, I want to worship somebody just like me. I'm gonna worship another woman. Wow. I'm gonna marry another man. Do you see what I'm saying? This is worship of self in its highest. It's gross. And here we are. And guess what? This is what the scripture right here says too. It's going to cost you something. Because now look at the people. God, the people in Egypt were so quick to get those people, get Israelites out of their land. They were giving them gold, giving them silver, giving them all kinds of wonderful things. They took the treasures that they had just gotten. Gold and precious jewels that they did not work for. That were bestowed upon them because they were God's chosen people. Come on in, baby. I heard you like two thirty seconds left, right? They took the jewels and things that God had given them, and what? They eagerly broke them off. Let me tell you, infidelity is expensive. It costs you something. Infidel, infidelity is expensive. It costs you a whole lot. 
Mm. It costs you a whole lot to cheat on God. That's why your conscience is all messed up. That's why you start looking all bad. One particular person I know that's in sin and okay with being in sin used to be a beautiful person. And now to look at it, it looks like she don't crack. <laughs> like, what is really happening? And, and never had a crack, never had a, just look, you can see the scent all over the person. And it's like, wow, you haven't even been to the dentist. I mean, it's, total, it's neglect. Fulfilling the flesh, but it's total neglect. And it's so obvious. It's like, and I said to him, I said, I said, I said I'm not trying to be funny or anything. I said, but have you seen yourself lately? You feeling okay? Girl, I'm having the time of my life. Really? It does not look like it. Don't she don't even see it. She doesn't even see it. That's how blind she is. I mean, like, wow. And this is somebody who took pride in the way they looked and always had their hair done. Uh, to look at you would think she was on drugs. She she thinks she's in the height of what she is. Cause she just finally said, look, you in denial. I'm not in denial. I'm just having fun. And you know, I'm not gonna be saved because that stuff doesn't work. And she thinks she's having fun. She drinking whatever she wants to, smoking whenever she feel like it, like cigarettes and stuff, because she always was curious about cigarettes. Not even trying to say, but now she's smoking. She looks like a crackhead. <laughs> and I have got my record is on high. When I look at the person, I say. You don't look so good. And I'm trying to be diplomatic, but she is so consumed with finally feeling like she's doing something and doing what the, the taboo thing is really the taboo. You know, I'm doing what my mother and my father said I couldn't do. She's finally doing it, but it's taking a physical toll that she can't even see. Other people see it. It's expensive. It's costing that person their physical looks. Forget about money, depending on what thing you're indulging in. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It costs. These people breaking off blessings that God had given them. They're throwing them saying, this is, these are gods right here. We choose man. And here's God opening the mouth saying, I'm, I'm, I'm sick of it. Because guess what? Moses is coming back down on the mount, from the mountain. Jesus is coming back. If Moses is a type of Jesus Christ, as a mediator between God and man, mediator is somebody who tries to keep these two people from getting at each other. This one's about to get down upon down to pon cock and down upon you. That's me in class. Y'all gotta see me. But these people down here about to get it, and God is like upon the down upon the down, and they're like, ah! here's the mediator in between. I think that was very cool. My kids love me because of the stuff like that. Moses like God, he says, listen, you made a promise to Abraham. You made a promise. You said you would not wipe them out. You said that you would raise up a seed in Abraham, and you promised that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So you can't do that. God is huffing and puffing, and he knows his word, and he's just, go get them people, please. Moses, please go get these people. Moses goes down. Jesus is coming back. And when he finds that Moses is so upset, he's so vexed, he comes down, he's blown, he throws the tablets down that God just wrote with his finger. He breaks them, he goes in there, he's kicking this thing down, this calf. He's kicking it down, breaking it, the Bible says he grounded the powder, he put it in some water, he strawed it up, and he made the people, the people drink it. Moses went ballistic on these people. And he asked one question, and we're going to stop, we, this is where well, I got to stop. He asked one question, he said... Who's on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. Whoever wants to be faithful from this point, only one tribe out of all those people were willing to admit that they were wrong. It was the tribe of Levi. They are the priesthood right now of the Israelite people. What does the Bible say about us? First Peter says that we are a royal priesthood. We are a chosen generation. This is, if you, the only way you can be a royal, gener a royal priesthood and a chosen generation and a holy nation is if you are willing to admit you wrong. Because Levi was down there dancing with everybody else too. But when they had the opportunity to get it right, Levi says, we're going we to go with Moses. That was the difference between the tribe of Levi and everybody else. The only true royal priesthood, if you really somebody devoted to God, if you really 
want to be somebody who is faithful to God, you will admit when you are wrong and you will get back to where you need to be. It's really that simple. It didn't say a perfect priesthood. It said a royal priesthood. That means God has imputed his righteousness on us and he's saying, listen, Levi says, I, I'm wrong. All his tribe. Moses says, take out your sword. Every idol worshiper you see, cut him down. Kill him. Get rid of him. There are consequences to this. Moses was man. Moses was bad. He was very upset. Moses was bad. He, do, do you see? He, and he here it is. He killed the He killed the He killed the He took it over. Go ahead. Breaking, get him. Breaking the commandments. And, and they went and did exactly as, and, they, and the, this is the bad part about it though. They missed their blessing. And I'm trying to keep y'all, y'all have to understand, there's so many ways that we put things before God and we worship God and we do all these things. There's so many ways that we cheat on God. We hate being cheated on. If you've ever been cheated on, there is nothing like the feeling, the shock and awe when you realize that you have been betrayed. It never leaves you. It never, ever, ever leaves you. That feeling, never, ever, and you never forget it. Even if you forgive people, you never forget when you have been betrayed. Ever. Think about it. And it's a deep feeling. And it's a resentment that can sit in there. And that thing will get, and you, every time you see the person, your, the hair on the back of your neck stand up sometimes. If you don't turn it loose. When you, when you have been cheated on, and it finally comes to light. That the person you have been giving your all to has has chosen somebody else and has been playing you, it never, ever, 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 wow. ever goes away. You never forget that person. Just like you never forget the first person you laid with, you never forget the, the person who, who betrayed you. Do you see what I'm saying? But the blessing is Psalm 103 verse 10 says this, but he has not dealt with us according to our iniquities, nor has he punished us according to our sins. Psalm, what? Psalm 103, verse 10. <laughs> that is the blessing. 9 says, he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger for us ever. That's the difference between us and God. After we cheat on God, he's going to turn it loose like it never happened. Us, it takes like years, like a whole lot of time to turn it loose when we finally do. Yeah. If we do. So that same feeling you feel when you've ever been cheated on, or you realize that somebody don't love you the way they lo the way you love them, that feeling right there, that ought to be a motivator to keep you from cheating on God. We have to start thinking about it. Because even though you, they may not be neglecting you, if they feel neglected, if they're not faithful, they might, they might go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we have, I, 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 don't, I don't know if, I don't know if it's, if it's just me, but when you, when you realize that you've been cheated on, somebody, for somebody who's been cheated on, what did you do when you realized that you were cheated on? If somebody would be willing to share. Hmm. When you realize that you were cheated on, what did you do? <laughs> oh, it's going to be quiet. <laughs> I haven't been done for the process. You can't! You can't! It takes a while. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. What do you do when you realize when it finally dawns on you? Wait a minute. You kind of have to connect. I just it's kind of like almost like you're being remedial. Like, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's for one, one plus one. one. Right. And, you. and then it all starts and unfolding. Just, and you say, and just oh. it So that's why he did that. Sometimes you blame yourself. Then you like start revealing, yes. like things start coming to life. You blame the self. It's real. Was I not good enough? Did I do something mm -hmm. wrong? Well, too nice. <laughs> you kick yourself. Why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I give you ever heard that? Did somebody say you was too mean? No. Never. <laughs> you can never be too mean, though. Why did I never. give that up? <laughs> Why did I do that? <laughs> I don't think it was my life wasn't really as it related to the relationship. I felt like, dang, I wish the time on you and I. My grades look like my grades look 
<laughs> my relationship with God. Oh, I done threw that out the window for oh, you. And you don't even, you're not even trying to feel with me like that? That's how you feel, son. Yeah. Really? That's all you gotta do is come. And like, why did you lie? Like, what was, cool. I hate that. Like, like what, what was the point? What was the point? It's, and this is the thing about grown people. Grown people don't have to lie. That's what I'm saying. You don't have grown to. Grown people don't have to lie. You don't well, understand. You wrong. If you feel like you have to lie, you are still immature. Yes. You are still insecure. What are you talking for? Sometimes, sometimes like. Oh. 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 No, 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 I was afraid. I thought your name was crazy. You came in here today. You want to sneak Like, for real. Like, if I that opportunity, if I got a girlfriend, but you know what I'm saying? It's an opportunity. Immature. It's pride. It's not pride. It's like, why do you like, can I get it? Can I get her? Can I get him? Right. Not can I. Like, you. Wow. You might not have a chance. Get another chance for what? Uh, this is April. Talking about cheating on your boyfriend, girl. How's that? You cheat. So if you cheat, if, if you had the opportunity to cheat, you know what I'm saying? And we find out, now, I mean, if but you this is- you had the opportunity, like you, would think, you would think you, what? If you had the opportunity- Might not get another chance, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm saying! I just want, we're gonna put you on 24-hour watch, boy. 28 hour watch, when you get your eye broken, we're gonna put you on 48 hours. But it's still, it, to me, it's just immature work. You don't have to lie, you don't. You don't have to be you lie. When you are really an adult, you, don't you do to. not have to lie. They you can just lie. say, right. I didn't want to, right. or I don't like you, right. or it's, uh, it's, done. it's, it's the no way more. you do it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You yeah. might do it a different way, but when I, I, just, I, just I didn't go, I didn't feel like it. Why didn't you come at, I don't want to. Or well, maybe I just want to be greedy. Yeah, right, you know what I'm saying? When you're an adult, for real, well, you don't have to lie. Over the body. <laughs> Only immature people lie. have to pick and choose what they want to say and cover stuff up. That's when you know you're not ready even to be in a relationship. The only person who you're ready to be with is God. <laughs> That's it. Because ain't nobody else going to put up with your foolishness. Nobody. <laughs> right over the floor. Nobody. But it's, it's something that we have to understand. And we'll finish this next week. Hey, Matter of yeah. fact, it can't even be next week because I, I have a school function next week that I have to be to with well, my kids. I promise you, y'all. We have to get to the root of this because our affections and our desires are so connected to other things that when we, and it's time to come in here to get into the presence of the Lord, even if nobody else got into the presence of the Lord, you can get in the presence of the Lord in your bathroom, in your house. You can hear from the Lord. You can be with God. You can walk in heavenly places. You can have all the blessings that God has for you. If you deny all these other gods, Put all these people down. Forget about what people think about you. Forget about all these other loves and the things that are pulling at your flesh. If you can just get focused a little bit and say, you know what, God, is, I'm, I promise you, I'm coming after you with all the guns blazing. Either you're going to have me or you're going to kill me because I'm not going to leave you alone. Which, I need you. Where's that at on there? Which one? Focus. Focus. It's, it's, I don't know. Why people cheat? Why? Why? Why people cheat or what you want from your spouse? Period. <laughs> Communication. I, 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 I think we focus on huh? Right, isn't it? Just, it is. I know where you said focus. Focus. One day. Focus on what? Focus. I don't know. Something. We said something like it. Go you oriented. You said focus on what? We said go oriented. Or something. All right. If you're focused oh, on, we said if you focus on God, you won't cheat on God. If you focus on your spouse, you won't cheat on your spouse. Uh, the reason why you cheat on your spouse is because you lose focus of your spouse. Right. That's a big word. I'm going to throw out there and we'll finish with it next week. This is why people cheat, y'all. Y'all got to let me get out here because Sister Minna is going to shred me up in gratitude. What does that mean? I can be prove be it. Grateful. It means you I'm ungrateful grateful. for what you already have. Adam, you can eat from every tree in right. the garden except that one right there. Instead of him being grateful for having the entire garden all to himself that he didn't have to work for, didn't have to plant, didn't have to spend, didn't have to toil, and a, and a woman that he could enjoy, instead of him being grateful for what he had, he was so focused in the wrong way that he had to have the one thing he couldn't have. That's cheating. That's ingratitude. I just took you out of Egypt. I just, 
just performed 10 plays that got you loaded with gold and silver. I, I'm about to take you somewhere else. Oh, listen, Pharaoh, let my people go so that they can come and worship me in the wilderness. That's what God said. It wasn't just let my people go. The rest of that was so that they can worship me in the wilderness. So they can come be intimate with me. So they can come and know me like I want them to know me. They get out of the wilderness. I'm grateful for the gold, silver, and jewels. I'm grateful for the deliverance and not having to have a head beat down every day. I'm grateful for the fact that he's giving them food and clothing that doesn't wear out. So I'm grateful. I want to be like the Egyptians. Moses been gone for a little while. I want what I see. It looks like everybody in Egypt was having fun. Let me, let's go ahead and make us a God. And had the nerve to say when it was all done, this is our God that brought us out of Egypt. This is why I'm somebody. Because I do what I want to do. I pull myself up by my own bootstraps. I did that. I'm the reason I'm so good. Not because God brought me out. This is my God right here. This world system. If any man have the love of the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world is less the flesh, less of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's all this right here. Worldliness leads to infidelity. And when you are not unfaithful to God, you cannot expect to get into his heaven. You cannot expect to have abundant life. You can't. You cannot expect to, to do the thing, the great thing that God birth you into this world to do. You cannot, you will never do it. You will always be going around in your little merry-go-round, always in limbo, wondering what am I supposed to be doing? What's my purpose? Always wondering. You'll never do it as long as you still got an umbilical cord tied to something in this world. You'll never get it. So my challenge to you is, oh, I'm get shredded. My challenge to you is, figure out what needs to be cut out of your life and be done with it. Don't go back to it. Don't bring it with you. Because they left Egypt, but Egypt wasn't out of them. Some of them were born there. And they had to have it. Egypt was polytheistic. That means they worshiped lots of gods for everything. Israel was to only have one God by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's standard. But they wanted that. We can be in church and still want the things of the world. You can. You have to be pure. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. That's 2 Corinthians 6. You've got to come out. And it's not until you prove that you can be faithful to God. And I'm not just talking about faithful to church. I'm not talking about faithful on the choir and the dance team. I'm not talking about faithfulness of coming here and keeping roll. I'm talking about when you leave here, if you can, you literally say, God, I do. I got a hankering for that. But because I love you more, I just want you more than anything. Please, Lord, help me. Help me to do it. I want to be by you. I want to be with you. And to cut, have the courage to cut some people off. Levi had to cut his brothers off. He pulled, they pulled their sword out, the whole tribe. Pulled their sword out. And I'm sure they had to slay people that they, that they were next door neighbors with. They had to slay people that they were with. All those people were related. <laughs> They had to kill family. They had to kill friends. They slew everybody who worshipped every other God. Are you willing to take out your sword and cut down anything that keeps you from having a relationship with God? If not, you come in the Bible study in vain. You have to be willing to take out your sword and cut you off. You know what? I love you so much, but you know what? You're not, you're not, you're not even trying to be that. You're not even trying to do that. Matter of fact, you're pulling me backwards. I got to turn you loose. That's hard. Because this is your boy who you communicate all the time with. <laughs> I mean, it's uncomfortable to think about it, but you might have to turn, I mean, literally, and we say, oh, we can have nothing. No. You can gain everything just by, your, just by the, 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 the pure passion of saying, even if I do it to a fault, I'm coming after you. That's why Islam blowing people up, tearing up the World Trade Center. Because they get, I got to do it. My mind is set. This is my God. This is what he told me to do. It's against the law. <laughs> if I live, I'm going to jail. They're going to they kill me. But I'm going to do it for my God. 
And so, I'm telling you, half the time when people be people win you and they don't, you scared to debate and you scared to talk to them about Jesus Christ. It's not because they know more than you or know more about their religion. It's because they are more passionate about it and they make you back down because they sound like they know what they're talking about. They sound like they know what they're talking, and it sound right, and it sound good, and it sound like yeah, it make you step back because they coming at you. No. <laughs> Because the Holy Quran says no, because the this says and that says, and they are so passionate and they're willing to stand flat footed with you simply because they devoted to they devoted to a lie. And make the Christians with the truth back down. We come to Bible study every Tuesday. You see what I'm saying? It's more about you being passionate and devoted to your God in conjunction with learning. Add to your faith virtue. And to your virtue knowledge, and to your knowledge temperance, and to your temp... It, I mean, this it's, it's things that you do to stay faithful. Trust me, what happens when you marry somebody, and they get into a car accident, and they paralyze from the waist down? You're going to divorce them? Because they can't perform due benevolence? Think about it. How faithful and how intimate are you? When, like I was telling you, you coming home from your honeymoon and a rock drops on your, your, your wife's face through the windshield and smash your face up and she don't look like the one you on the pictures from the wedding. No. What do you do? Didn't that really happen? Yes, ma'am. Didn't your face get reconstructed? Yes, but it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. She beautiful couple, black couple, riding and kids playing games, throwing rocks off the overpass when cars were going under her, threw a rock big enough and hard enough to crash through the windshield and land it right on the girl's face. Okay. Are they married? Yes, they still married today. Why? Because they were committed. No. You done made a vow. <laughs> you, can't that one <laughs> you can't leave people like that. It was in the news last month about a woman who was at her bachelorette party. They were playing too much horse playing. She fell into the pool, busted her neck, broke her neck up. Mm -hmm. She's paralyzed for the rest of her life. That, oh. Do you know that man still married her a few weeks ago? A year later, after rehab, she's still in a wheelchair. He still married her. Could you do that? That's yeah. called fidelity. Why, why are you about to laugh though, man? <laughs> Can you handle that? Because there's no guarantee. Oh. Could, could God really do that to you just because? Yes, sir. But don't, don't just like he can take Job's kids, rock. just like he can strike yeah, Job's body, one. Just like he can take all Job's camels, all his oxen, just like he can take Job's friends and turn them on him, God will and can test you. Uh -uh. But the Bible says in Job that he sinned not in it, with his mouth, and in all that, he didn't charge God falsely. He didn't blame God. He did not curse God with his mouth. He cursed everything else. He cursed the day he was born. He said, I wish my mama had crossed her legs and I never came out. Read the book of Job. He said, I wish my mother had just crossed her legs and I just not, I wish I was never born. But he never said, God, I hate you. He never, out of revenge, changed God's. Even his wife, his wife even recommended, curse God and die. You what is this, man? This is ridiculous. Just go ahead and end it all. He said, lady, you're talking crazy. You talk like one of those foolish women. Shall I receive good of the Lord's hand and not receive evil? Wait a minute. Wow. Well, I can hit a hole with a joke running through my what brain. The hell? No. Shall I her? receive? Huh? She, with her? She, was she like probably was, you know, she probably was trying to do this out, almost like euthanasia. Yeah. Trying to kind of ease his comfort, you know, kind of comfort him and just say, you know what? Mercy, yeah, don't, don't, don't. To be just go ahead. Care. It's all good. Nobody will blame you <laughs> if you just curse God and die. I don't think she looked at him with disdain. Maybe she did, maybe she doesn't. I didn't look at it that way. But she just said, listen, just curse God and die. Lady, are you crazy? I can't do that. Who are you? In the first chapter, one I mean, one after the other, they kept coming. He said, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Worship. That's called intimacy. That's called, I'm going to be with you regardless. I, I, I've had to cry so, one time I cried so hard, I said, God, I don't care what you do, I love you just the same. And as soon as I made it my mind for real, not just with my mouth, I meant that. I said, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care what happens, I'm going to love you just the same. Everything turned around after that. Because I was upset. 
and hurt and destroyed. And I said, I, I don't care what happened.